It's semi-final time at the US Open and what a tournament is turning out for the United Kingdom. We have the Brit Jack Draper into the semi-final. He'll be playing Yannick Sinner, the world number one, one of the best players this year. And on the other side, the Americans, TFO versus Fritz. Semi-final time, people. Come on. And we've got a Brit in the semi-finals. Come on, Jack Draper. Absolutely loved it. He stormed through his semi, oh, well, his quarterfinal to get to the semis. He's now playing Yannick Sinner. It's confirmed. It went on late last night, but he got the victory over Daniel Medvedev. And uh, he's closing that head-to-head -head once more. It was a close match. It was a weird match, but... Yannick Sinner somehow managed to get it done. And this was the scoreline. 6-2, 1-6, 6-1, and then 6-4. So a bit of a topsy-turvy match. Not what I expected. I predicted three tie breaks. So it just goes to show my predictions have been completely off uh, this tournament as well. But I'm happy that I got the right person winning. Yannick Sinner in four, I did say. And he did go through in four sets. And now, fourth slam semi-final, 73 and 7 uh, since the US Open 2023 and 53 wins, five losses in 2024, JG. Yeah, I'm officially cursed when it comes to predictions this year at the US <laughs> Open. I've hardly made any good ones, so I put my hands up. Apologies. They've not been to my high standards I've set myself this US Open. Um I really thought Medvedev was going to trouble him more. I don't think it was a good performance from Medvedev. He struggled with the backhand cross court. Uh, I'm not going to go into too many details on the match because I didn't watch it live. But we both watched the 20 minute highlights, uh, the extended sort of every point of the match. Um, and I think you've just got to give a lot of praise to Yannick Sinner. He is producing some top tennis at the moment. And it's been not just this match, but I think. Whoever he played two matches ago, that's where it all started. Um, do you, I don't know if you've got his run there. That'd be great to have a look. Yeah, yeah, I can bring up uh, Medi's run. And no, Sinner. Run. Yeah, I can bring up both. One sex would be on the same head-to-head. -head. I can tell you it was. So it's Chris O'Connell, Tommy Paul, Medvedev. And at that go. Chris O'Connell match, that's where he announced himself at the tournament for me. He was super, super good. And it was the prime time Yannick Sinner. Uh, Mickelson didn't didn't really trouble him at all. No. And now, let's be honest, he's got to go on and win it. And if it's not him, for me, it's got to be Draper. Despite having the Americans at the bottom, I think the big favourite will be coming from the top. And if Draper even beats Sinner, then I think he's going to be favourite for the final, unless the nerves get the better of him. The difficult thing for Sinner or Draper, whoever wins, is they're going to be against the whole of America. It's going to be yeah. so loud. We know what uh, US Open finals are like when we've seen Medvedev and Djokovic there over the years. The crowd, I think, play more of a factor at the US Open final than any other slam. They're going to be cr going crazy because all of them are going to try and get there because even for the women the day before, there's going to be an American there, potentially. So the Americans, because they're having such a good tournament, everyone's going to be up for it. Do I think... It's just, it's just made a really interesting narrative. Sinner, Draper will be big favourites going into it, but you never know. And Sinner is performing at his very best. And statistically now, you've seen some stats there. I think there were some more I had, what I sent you. Um, he's performing just there. better than everyone. Yeah, there are quite a few stats coming yep. uh, out about Yannick Sinner after this one. Uh, this one saying since the well, I think we read this one sort of similar since the start of the 2023 season. Sinner has become the first player to achieve 20 ATP top 10 wins on hard court with uh, his defeated opponent Daniel Medvedev, 13. Next best uh, on the surface over that span. I mean Daniel Medvedev, yeah. I mean that's the crazy thing that he's able to be beating Daniel Medvedev so many times, and Daniel Medvedev is just one of the best. I mean, that's the most impressive thing for me from Yannick Sinner at the moment is he's able to replicate the the things which are like incredible feats in the sport. Beating Daniel Medvedev on a hard court, some people may only do it once in their career. He seems to be doing it multiple times now and he's doing it at Medvedev's best tournament. Like 
that US Open is where Medi is at home. And I thought he looked brilliant this tournament, Daniel Medvedev. And even in this match, he said it. he felt good in sets, uh, I think it was set two and set, f uh, even in set four, he said, he said set one and set three, I don't know what, what happened. He said, I wasn't really feeling it. He said, it's just one of those things in tennis though. You can't always be at your best, but he said it was even more noticeable. And he said, Sinner was the same. He said, it was like, it was like a complete like ebb and flow, the match. You didn't know which way it was going to go. And he was just disappointed that in that fourth set, he wasn't able to, to get it over the line. But he said, obviously, Yannick Sinner was the better player today. And that's why I lost. So I can't do anything about it. I'll go back to the drawing board, learn about why I lost. And Yannick Sinner, he's now facing somebody he's played doubles with uh, this year, which is Jack Draper, his close friend, which yep. I think that makes an extra narrative to this. I don't want players to be too friendly, but... I think I do quite like that the fact that against Alcaraz, he always has like, fantastic matches and they're quite yeah. friendly. I think Draper it could be the same. They've only played once before and it was three years ago. Draper beat him at Queen's. They're both ultra competitive people and they're going to want to win at all costs. So I think the friendship thing goes up, out the window while they're playing. I know they do yeah. text each other regularly. Draper's come out and said that. I found some of the stats I wanted to share anyway. Uh, and on. that is this group, one from Tennis TV, nice graphic. And you've got the active players who have reached the semi-final at every Grand Slam. So you've got Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, Marin Cilic and Yannick Sinner. You don't even have Carlos Alcaraz there. And he's now reached the semi-final at all of the slams. Australian Open, Roland Garros, Wimbledon and the US Open. It's an incredible feat for Yannick Sinner. And it just shows his consistency across all of the slams. And the fact that he can play on any surface, and it's all happened pretty recently as well. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, he's just become this guy who is one of the best in the world. And it seems like overnight, he was threw up in a bucket, which is quite funny, really, because there's also a situation where Jack Draper had the same incident where he threw up in a, in a trash can uh, on the court. And beside, from that moment, they've both elevated their game somewhat. Yeah. It's so strange that he can look back on that moment in his career for the career-changing moment. Maybe he flushed out all of the bad shots in that one moment out of his system. And uh, whatever he took that day, I wouldn't mind throwing up and starting to play tennis like Yannick Sinner. Be perfectly happy with it because he's going on and creating loads of records. And at the moment, he's now the second youngest player to reach the semi-final at the Australian Open, Indian Wells, Miami and the US Open open in a calendar year after Rafael Nadal in 2008. I mean, there you go. Like the, the list got even shorter there. We went from four players now just to like two players, which is absolutely insane. What I mean, how is he managing to keep this level? I'm so surprised that coming in with all of the spotlight on Yannick Sinner in this tournament, he's kept his nerves like better than I would ever expect. I thought that it'd be a bit rattled. I thought that this was going to be a tournament where he'd be affected, his performances yeah, too, would yeah. suffer. But it hasn't at all. It's the complete opposite. It's like he's blocked everything out. He's got a good team around him, like he's saying here. The people close to him of what he uh, pays tribute to for yeah. why he's doing so well. It's yeah. amazing. He's, he's not let it distract him. He said, I have my team and my people are close to me. Uh, you know, they know me. They know I always stick with the people who who me and believe me, it's a very important part. And obviously, I'm very happy to have them. You know, coach-wise and also off the court, yeah, obviously, in the beginning was a bit of a tough situation. But, you know, day by day, it went, it went got better. So, yeah, I'm happy about that. Let's see now in the semis what I can do. I think he does have a close team spirit. And it's a bit of a bubble he's in. And he's just able to produce his good results. We know... Uh, his dad follows around sometimes with him and cooks him home cooked meals, and all of these little touches I think produce allows him to produce his best tennis. And for Italy, there's no one flying the flag like him in any sport. He is the first Italian, male or female, in the Open era to reach three Grand Slam semi-finals in a season. The first to claim ten plus ATP top ten wins in consecutive seasons. And Insane. since the ATP rankings were first published in 73, Pioneer. And that's the last one I sent you from Opta Race. Um, that's insane. Just I mean... like big numbers. And 
I think the most impressive part of that is the fact that he consistently does it against the best players like Djokovic does. He's very Djokovic-esque. Yeah. Against the top 10, he is winning. He is beating them guys on a regular basis on any of the surfaces as well. I totally agree. That's the one takeaway from Yannick Sinner's match or, and his gameplay as well. Every time you watch him, you get a set standard now. Uh, it doesn't drop below a certain level and he will always fight to the bitter end. He didn't used to be that guy. He now is that guy. And similar to Djokovic, you'll never see him really just uh, disappear in a match. He's always in it for at least a set, maybe two. And he always has a chance of winning. And like you're saying, people in his box, they're all uh, very, very close-knit people. And interesting to see somebody else in his box yesterday. Anna Kalinskaya, there you go. So maybe all of these rumours need to disappear and uh, leave them alone, eh? Look, maybe that's why he won. Maybe they're all back on track. I can't keep up. They're with each other one minute. <laughs> they're, they're off the next. Um, Kalinskaya went out and she saw Sinner going through, so maybe they're all back together again. But hopefully we just see the best tennis because that's what ultimately we care about. Uh, moving on to Jack Draper, the Brit. It is breaking news in the UK. We've not seen someone do what Jack Draper's done from a British perspective since Emma Raducanu. And the reason I draw the similarities because he's the first player to go 14-0 and in sets at the US Open main draw since Emma Raducanu. There they are together. Lovely couple, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> maybe they're going to ride off into the sunset if uh, Jack wins the US Open as well. And I think it's pretty crazy that he's now emulating a little bit of the similar thing that Radu Kanu's done. He's had a longer route towards not. this. He's not, I hope I mean, it's not the same way. I hope it's not no, he wins the US the Open same. and then we just never see him again in the t on a tennis a different court playing well. He's had a different road. We know that the road that he's had to get to this position has been a long, sort of arduous. He's had injuries. He's come back. He won the UTS, which I think was a big like confidence builder for him. Won a tournament as well. And now he looks absolutely fantastic. And like Mario Bacardi says here, uh, the men who have made it to a Grand Slam semi-final this year without dropping any sets, there's only Sinner and Draper. And that was at the Australian Open and Jack Draper at this US Open. Yep. I'm very excited because I think Jack Draper may one day be in as high a regard as Yannick Sinner is right now. And it's just when, not if, for me. I think that he's that good. I think that he has all the attributes. He's, he's about, what, 6'5". He's got a massive serve. He's a lefty, which is awkward as well for a lot of Fair players yeah. on the tour. And he hits hard. He's a very, very powerful hitter. And when he, he said that, and talk about the bubble as well, he has his own bubble. That's the one thing. He sits in this bubble. He doesn't look at his phone. He doesn't go on social media. That is very important when you're in this type of environment. There's a lot of negative people trying to get in your head. I think he's not allowed it, this tournament, and he's feeling his best. He said that he's ever felt in any tournament in his career, and he's able to stay fit. He's able to go five sets if he needs to, he says. He's never felt like this before in his career. I think it's all signs are up for Jack Draper right now. I'm very proud uh, of him and proud to be an Englishman because it's great that we've got another guy back in a semi-final. I think he's the first Brit since Andy Murray in 2012 at the US Open. Yeah, and to rein it in slightly, his draw has been very nice to get to this stage. Even Alex de Menor, uh is a tough match, but he was holding his hip throughout the match and I don't think he was 100% in, in that one. And you were speaking yeah. about him not dropping sets. I know you've mentioned Sienna, how he did it at the Australian Open. But he's also the first man to reach the US Open semis without dropping a set since Medvedev in 2020. So Correct. it's been four years yeah. since someone was able to do it, which is another big achievement. And this is some of the matches he's played. So it has been a bit underwhelming. I mean, he played an in injured Zhang, Diaz Acosta on a hard court. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was reading Adkaz then, but it's not Adkaz. It's yeah. <laughs> Butik van der Zanslup, who was completely checked out. That was the, an awful, one of the worst performance of the whole tournament. Mahat, I don't know what happened there. And Dimonor, <laughs> who was really not at his physical best. Yeah, and He can't Kyrgios. control any of it. He can only beat who's in front no. of him and fair play to him. 
Exactly right. I think that that's the main thing. I think that the way that he's dispatched them has been like a confident, I'd say sure, top yeah. ten, top ten player. It's not like somebody who's dropped a set here, dropped a set there, and mate. Yeah, he should be beating those players, but in the le- in the way that he's done it and at that level, he's actually dispatched them with such ease. Even Alex Dimonor on a on a bit of a dodgy hip can probably still take a set or so against bear in mind he beat Jordan Thompson in the last round who was playing fantastically and he Draper just made him look bang average out there but Nick Kyrgios said damn wasn't expecting Demon to go down in straight sets sheesh props to Draper big lefty looking solid yeah so he recognizes the lefty is a big thing and Yannick Sinner in his post-match press conference he's noted that as well that's one of the main things which he's looked at in Draper that could be a problem and the fact he's a left-hander. So I'll be interested in those stats of Sinner versus left-handers now. Hopefully someone can send some over to us. But yeah, interesting. I've got a question Go I'm going to throw to you. Let's say Sinner beats Jack Draper. He's into the final. Who would Sinner rather play, TFO or Taylor Fritz? TFO. I, I completely disagree. I just completely, I've been thinking about it. I think he would much rather play uh, Taylor Fritz. I think TFO, who's just got to a final beating Taylor Fritz, he just seems so calm this year. He's dangerous. I think he is probably the most feared player from that side, despite him not being as good as Taylor Fritz because of the whole aura and him rising to the US Open. There's no player in the last few years who has played as good as as Francis TFO at the US Open consistently. For me, I would say Taylor Fritz would be more worrying. I watched him play TFO in the final of Cincinnati and he, he, he blitzed him in the second set. I, th- I think that TFO is too erratic. You need somebody who is a little bit more regimented when you come to a final. I think Taylor Fritz has better fundamentals if he's able to keep the the mind in check, bigger serve as well. That's the, that's all I'm thinking is more consistent shots. TFO can just go a bit crazy. I don't. It might work if you beat him in straight sets. It won't work if you try and beat him over five sets. I don't think for tr- Francis TFO. Not this Yannick Sinner. Too good. Too consistent. But who says Sinner's getting there anyway? Let's stop talking like Jack Draper's out of the equation right now. I'm not having that. Um, but we should speak about the other one. It is the Americans. There they are, this lovely graphic as well, the American flag in the background. Taylor Fritz will have to get past Francis TFO. He has a better head-to-head against TFO as well. I think he's won the last six and not lost to TFO since 2016. So he'll be the favourite. But like you said, anything can happen on a court uh, at the US Open. And if anybody can do it, I think this is a really great opportunity for Francis TFO. It's, it's no better. You couldn't pick somebody like a novice in their first ever slam semi-final. At least TFO's got something on him. I think it's a great opportunity for either of them. It's a great opportunity yeah. for everyone, including <laughs> Jack Draper. <laughs> yeah, and it's it, mad. It, just, it is a very open semi-final. It's not like the usual ones we go into. Sinner no. is the outright favourite to win this event. People are expecting him to do it, but it might not go that way, and I'm not sure. I, I really am fascinated to watch. I can't wait to sit down and watch both of these semi-finals. I think they're going to be epic. Hopefully the timing's not too bad for us in the UK. Um, and what's this one? The ESPN, the 2024 US Open is the first major with multiple American men and women in the semi-finals in 21 years. We've got Pagula, we've got Navarro, we've got Taylor Fritz, and we've got Francis TFO. There's all four of them. Are we going to see one champion from the four? Um, Sabalenka and Sinner would be the bookies' favourite, but it'll be yeah. nice to see at least one, one out, either the men or the women, one of the Americans to win the whole thing. Let's get into our predictions. We'll start with which one? Let's start with the one we just spoke about. It is Fritz versus TFO. And I think we've, we're sort of showing our cards a little bit there, but I don't know. I, I like to think on the spot. So uh, you go first, and I'm going to mull it over a little bit because I feel like you're a bit more ready than I am. Not Give us quite. a story. I mean, well, do you want to talk about head to heads? Because I know you love yeah, a good head to head. I love a good head to head. Let's go. 6 1 in favour of Fritz. The last time they played was at Acapulco in a quarterfinal. It was straight sets Fritz. 
the last two times they played were straight sets for its, but the Tokyo final was two tie breaks, so very close. Uh, yeah, like I said, not beating him since 2016, and that was uh, Indian Wells. Yeah, Fritz has had his number since then. Six wins on the bounce. Uh, they only met once in a slam. That was at Australian Open in 2022, and it was straight sets Fritz on that occasion. Okay, so everyone's expecting Fritz. The bookies have it as pretty one-sided for Taylor Fritz. I could confirm the odds now. It's 1.36, uh, 1.4 with some. TFO at freeze. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to have Francis TFO upsetting the other American. I think he's riding on some kind of adrenaline. I think he's played so well up to date. So is Fritz as well. And I'm going to have TFO winning in four sets. Wow. Big, big call there. The underdog pick there from JG. Uh, well, I'm going to be going the other way. I feel like the thing that is in the favour of Taylor Fritz, which may settle his nerves in this occasion, is that he's got a guy down the other end that he knows he can beat. And he knows how to beat him. He's beaten him six times in a row. And I think that will be the telling factor in this. If he starts to get a little bit... Well, I think he's going to lose a set. But I think I think he may lose the first set, Taylor Fritz. But he's going to go to his box. He's going to look at them, the people he trusts. And they're going to tell him, look, you know how to beat him. Look, you know what works against Francis. And he's going to start using that, coming back into it. And he'll win in four. I think the last set may be like a... 6-1. Okay, moving on to the other semi-final. Yannick Sinner versus Jack Draper. Ooh. Could it be a magical occasion for the Brit? Is he going to be able to take a set or are we going to see primetime Yannick Sinner? For me, I think we're going to see primetime Yannick Sinner. I think he's going to... He just looks calm. I don't think any of the positive test stuff's really playing an impact on his game. That was my real reason why I think he would struggle. Uh, statistically, he is the best hardcore player in the world. I've been saying for a few years that Daniel Medvedev, for me, is right up there with a Novak Djokovic, if not better, on a hardcore. Statistically, he's beaten more people. I think there was 20 wins on hardcore. So I had a stat, and Medvedev's on 13. I'm not yeah, sure when that falls from, but he's definitely... Medvedev is second on the list. Sinner is yeah. first with 20 wins on a hardcore. Yeah. Must just Crazy. be slams. And... On that basis alone, he is a hardcore specialist. The guy who won the Australian Open. Is he going to do the double, the Australian Open, the US Open? Looks likely. I think Draper's not going to be able to compete because it's going to be a big difference to his previous matches. And on that basis, I'm going to have Yannick Sinner winning in straights. Oh, God. The straight sets. <laughs> it's so sad. Um, the one thing to take away, they did pick up in the press room for Jack Draper. They said at the beginning of the first set against Alex uh, against Alex Dimonor, he was actually tweaked something in his thigh. Um, he said, yeah, I definitely felt something. But he said, I'm just going to... I just went back to the, to the seat, played through it, and I was able to... He said... I'm just in that mindset now where mentally I'm a lot stronger and I know I can play through things. And that was, for me, a real positive. Hopefully there's nothing really negative and it's not a proper stretch. But I'm going to go... God, this is so frustrating. I want, I really want to believe. I want to believe there's something special at this year's US Open. I believe in something special on the women's side. Go check out that preview if you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go for something crazy on the men's and I'm going to go Jack Draper to beat Yannick Sinner in four sets. He can't go to five. I don't think with Sinner, I think Sinner will get him. I think four sets, Jack Draper, he loses, he wins the first, loses the second and then wins the final two. Yeah. And that's even bigger odds than the TFO one. He's at five, Jack Draper, Sinner 1.17. So everyone Come on, Jack. him to beat Come Jack on, Draper. Son. But there we go. That is our semi-final predictions. Let us know yours in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out our women's preview. We did that one. We'll be going through the semi-finals as they're played, giving you some post-match reactions. And anything left to say? Just come on, Jackie boy. Two more wins, and you could be US Open champion. See you soon.